Hello again, I had to stop the previous video because uh, it was getting too long and I think it's better to uh, um, divide this uh, uh, section or this concept into videos that are short. So from the previous example, uh, we were analyzing this uh, question, how many Caesar ciphers are there? And so if you recall from the previous uh, video, so we were doing the uh, analysis for 26 and we realized that 26 is exactly the same as uh, doing uh, shift of zero clockwise, 27 clockwise is exactly the same as one, and 28 clockwise is exactly the same as shifting uh, clockwise uh, two units. Now, what do you think is gonna happen with 29? Now, if you see the pattern here, so you can actually guess what's gonna happen with the next one. So 29, will actually be exactly the same as three. So what do I mean by that? It means that that shifting 29 positions clockwise is exactly the same as shifting three position clockwise. And this is gonna be, is gonna follow the same pattern. So for 30 is gonna be four, for 31 is gonna be five and so on and so forth. So basically what we have here is we don't have an infinite number of Caesar ciphers because we have ciphers from zero to 25, which indicate the number of positions that we're gonna shift. Once we go over that point, 26, shifting to the right, is exactly the same as zero. 27 is exactly the same as one. And so we don't have an infinite number of ciphers. So how many do we have? Well, if you go back here, so we basically have only shifting positions from zero to 25. So how many are there? So only 26. So we have only 26 Caesar ciphers, only 26 possible Caesar ciphers. Because if you have a cipher that shifts 26 clockwise, it's gonna be exactly the same as shifting uh, clockwise zero. Or 27 is just shifting clockwise one. Now, what do we want to look at that? Well, first of all, we want to look at that because we want to know how many Caesar ciphers are there. That's an important thing to do. And the second thing is there is a relation between the number 26 and the number zero, the number 27 and the number one, the number 28 and the number two, the number 29, the number three, and of course the next one will be the number 30, the number four. What's the relation between 26 and zero, 27 and one, 28 and two, 29 and three. So let's look at that. So let's say the following thing. Every time I go around 26, it's like starting all over again. So what's the relation between 26 and zero? If you look at that, what is the remainder? So let me look at that. The remainder of the division of 26 divided by 26. So let's do that. So 26 divided by 26 lives remainder zero. What happens with this one here? So what happens if I take 27 and divided by 26 leaves remainder one. What happens with this one? So if I take 28 and divided by 26 leaves remainder two. And you see what's happening here. The the pattern is now the 27, 29 divided by 26 leaves remainder three. So zero, let me use another color here. Zero correspond to this zero here. One correspond to this one here two, that is right here, 
corresponds to this two here and three corresponds to this one there so every time i want to know how many positions or how many uh, units to the right or clockwise i have to move that is equivalent to saying that I just look at the remainder of that number of positions divided by 26, that's how much I have to move. Okay, if that didn't make sense to you, let me explain that again. So when I move 27, 26 clockwise, it's exactly the same as moving zero. How do I obtain this zero? It's just basically take the number of positions, if the number is big, you divide it by 26, the remainder is the actual number of positions that you have to move clockwise. If you move 27, clockwise that's equivalent to moving one and how do we get that so you take this number 27 divided by 26 the remainder of that division is one so that's why you have to uh, shift your only one unit clockwise 28 is exactly the same you divide 28 by 26 and leaves remainder two so that's the actual number of position that you're doing clockwise 29 is exactly the same, 29 divided by 26 is a uh, lift remainder 3, and that's the actual number of positions that you have to move clockwise. So, I hope you get the idea here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the inner idea here, so, so assuming that n here is a positive positive integer and what do I mean by that so it's for example a positive integer or zero so it could be zero one two and so on so if I shift n positions clockwise that is equivalent is exactly the same as shifting as a shift of our positions clockwise let me erase that positions clockwise where r is equal to the remainder of n divided by 26. Now this is an important concept here, so I'm going to mark this down. So basically what I'm saying here is the following. If you move a thousand positions clockwise, you are actually have to move thousand positions. The actual number of positions that you have to move clockwise is actually the following. You take the number 1,000, you divide it by 26. The remainder is the actual number of positions that you have to uh, move clockwise. So everything here is about the remainder of the division. Now I'm assuming that you already know what I'm talking about, about what is remainder here. So you have, remember, when you do division of integers, what you do is you have a quotient, you have a remainder, whatever is left from that division, that remainder is the important part here. And the reason that it is important is because that's the actual number of positions that the actual effect of the number of positions that you are doing clockwise.